to be in the house of the Lord. There is no better way to usher in the new than with the creator of everything. We thank you all. I greet you in the name of our pastor and first lady on tonight. On all our social media platform, we greet you also. Let's set the atmosphere with the spirit of praise and worship. Put your hands together as the voices of Judah get ready to render us in with the ministry of song. Glory to God. It is 10 o'clock. Come on, somebody make some noise in here. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. It's 10 p.m. We're about to bring in the new year in God's house. How many just happy to be in God's house on tonight that you made it this far? You made it this far in 2023. You made it this far. You made it this far. You made it. Tell somebody, say, I made it this far. I made it this far. Come on, let your praise rise in this place. Let your praise rise. I know some of y'all are eight and you're full. Amen. You done got you a nap in and now you're up. Amen. Say it's 10 o'clock and I'm coming to get my praise on. Tell somebody it's 10 o'clock and I come to get my praise on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's put those hands together. Glory to God.
glory of the Lord rise in this place. Hands are lifted all over the room. Hands are lifted all over the room. I'm going to keep reiterating what has January to December looked like for you. Whatever it is, God still deserves the praise. He still deserves the glory. Come on and lift your voices in here on tonight. Hallelujah. Let your praise rise in this place on tonight. Glory to God. As we set the atmosphere, as time starts to wind down and time starts to get closer to another year. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're meditating. Give it a few more seconds. Meditate, meditate on who God is and what he's doing. Hallelujah. We breathe your air, God. Our lungs are working because of you, Jesus. And with that being said, let every breath, hallelujah, be for you, God. Come on right now, set it, set it, set it, set that atmosphere. Every voice, he knows your voice. So we speak it into the atmosphere. Words are a spirit. So what are you seeing God doing for you and what he's already doing for you? God, we tell you thank you. Let your praise rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. On your row, make sure your row is ready for God's word, ready to worship and praise. We love you, Lord. Bring all focus in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He wants to hear your voice. Let him know how much you love him. He's Elohim. He's El Shaddai. He's El Elyon. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus. Worthy is your name, Lord. Worthy is your name. Mm. Glory to God. From the inside, I hear you. From the inside, say it. May you delight. May you be ah, on the yes, on the. Mm -hmm. Come on, say it again. That's what we want. We want him to delight. On the inside. Set me on fire. Set me. Ooh, I want to hear y'all tonight. Minister to me. Oh. Yes. On the inside. Because all I want. Because all I For you. All I want is for, yeah, for you to be one, for you to be lifted high, yeah. Yes. All over the room. Voices are lifted, the hands are lifted, everybody say it. Take over. Let God take 
over tonight. Say, may you delight.
matter what it is, God is still worthy of all the praise and all the glory. It belongs to him. It belongs to him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bring it all the way down. All I want. Tell him, y'all. It's more. of everything. My heart's desire is all I I don't want the glory. Never want God's glory. I don't want the glory. Say it again. Say all I want. Your very life is God's glory. The very life you live for him. Doctor report says, All I want is for you, you to be glorified. You to one more time, and we're gonna come on, say it again. Hallelujah. Are you feeling the presence of God in this place? We are inviting the Holy Spirit to take full control. Hallelujah. Is there anyone here? that would like to share a testimony of what God has done for you this 2023. The floor is open right now. I don't know about you, but I know that I'm not even supposed to be here talking to you. I'm supposed to be dead a long time ago. You're looking at someone who has taken a 45 to the head. Came through the front of my face. No doctor can explain how it passes all these organs and I'm still alive. God knew that my purpose was not yet fulfilled. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one in this house that God has been faithful to. Some of us, we refuse to share the best part of our testimony. Somebody is waiting to hear your testimony, to be encouraged by something that they're going through. Don't be shy when it comes to helping somebody out of their situation or circumstance. So again... 
The floor is open. Come on up and share. Hello, Parkview. I just wanted to let everybody know that I am so hungry for Jesus Christ every single day of my life. A lot of you already know the story. Um, some of you may not have remembered, but in 2017, I lost the ability to walk, talk. I couldn't even swallow my food anymore. They had to put a breathing tube into my nose to allow me to even be able to eat, and I lost 30 pounds. I'm already a small guy as it is, and I'm like, how is it I lost 30 pounds? When I woke up that morning in the hospital, I was like asking my mom, why is it that I can't walk anymore, and why is it I cannot talk? And she said, Norman, you got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. So I asked the doctor what autoimmune disease I got diagnosed with, and they said multiple sclerosis. But then this happened in 2017. So then in 2019, I went to a different neurologist in Tampa, and they said, you don't have multiple sclerosis. You have a different autoimmune disease called myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein. I was like, what? And they were like, yes, it's an MOG mock disorder. And I was like, well, what is that going to affect? And they said it's going to affect your brain, it can affect your spine, and that's why you can't walk and that's why you can't talk. So I was like, the devil is a lie. I'm gonna get back on my feet and do everything the doctor says I'm not gonna be able to do. So that's why when you see me every Sunday in this church crying, it's not because I'm going through something, it's because of what Jesus brought me from. <laughs> And I was living a life not pleasing in the eyes of God, and I had to turn from my sinful ways and change my ways of living, because I was like, in order for Christ Jesus to use me, I have to deny my flesh and everything that is not pleasing in the eyes of God. So I'm a living witness that if you turn from your sinful ways and follow Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit will direct your path and order your steps in life. So everything the doctor said that I couldn't do, I bought a house, I'm living on my own, I can walk again. <laughs> so I'm just here to give my testimony to let everybody know to keep the faith and trust in the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit will direct your path in life. You've heard it. I'm sure someone else has a testimony that can encourage someone in this congregation. You never know what people are going through. You never know who you're gonna encourage. Amen? Come on up, D. I drank in the morning, went to work, came home from work, drank in the afternoon. Come on now. Before I went to bed, had me another drink or two, maybe three. But you know, God is good. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. You don't have to go to a rehab. You don't have to wear the patch. You don't have to listen to other people's stories saying, you can do it, you can stop. But when you call on Jesus, when you get on your knees and call on him and ask him, Father God, please, please, take the cigarettes out of my mouth, take that alcohol out of my mouth. And Father, you know, I stand before you and I give you all the praises. I give you all the glory. I give you the honor. And he turned my life around. I'm going to stand in here today. They counted me out. You're not going to be able to make it to 20, 30, 40, 50. But you know, when you got God directing your path, <laughs> 30 days, I'll be 70. 70 years old, and I'm still here. I'm still standing. Hallelujah. When you
you got a loving wife to support you, kids and grandkids, and family and friends, church family, and a loving pastor that they believed in me. Not what somebody said about me. He believed in me. I'm so grateful and thankful. If I could just stand here and tell it all, we'll be here all week. We'll be here the next year, 2025. But you know, I'm still here, still standing. And I will be here until they carry me out of here. I'm not leaving. I'm not turning around. I'm not going back. If you love Jesus, let me hear you. Don't be shy. Let me hear you say I love him. I love him. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm going to have an elaborate testimony as everybody else, but I'm praying for my children. We have six children. One of my children's had a terrible car accident. His car flipped several times. He was able to call me and say, Mom, I don't know what happened, but I'm standing outside my car, and I shouldn't have made it through. Another one of my sons arrested more than one time for DUI. This one time, I was taking him to court. He thought he was going in. So if he had to went in, you know, he's going to prison. All I could do, I say, Lord, it's in your hands. However, because I'm praying salvation for my children, each and every one of them, and I'm asking you to pray with me. Anyway, we went, long story short, we went, he came out. He didn't have to stay. And God blessed it where all of his court charges was paid for. Even when we are not faithful, God is faithful. Because the scriptures say, I've never seen a righteous forsaken, nor a seed baking bread. So one time, my mom was the righteous, and I was the seed. But now I'm the righteous, and my children are the seed. So, I mean, even for me to stand here today, I thank God we found this church. We're loving people. And like the brother said, loving pastor, preaching the word of God, loving first lady. I'm thankful to be here. I'm thankful to be here. And I graduated with my bachelor's degree this year. So I am thankful. I am thankful. And one more thing, I'm praying because I have a passion for ex-convicts. So I am praying for a business to help them. Because in Florida, you know, we really don't have a second chance for our, so pray my strength in the Lord. Shall we praise God? Shall we praise God? Hallelujah. He is faithful and he is just. He is kind. He's a wonderful God. Minister Brown said a while ago, he should not be here. And I believe him because I reached that place. I should not be here. Two times in my life, I've seen death face to face. Nothing I could have done about it, but because of God. A few years ago, that was the first one, I got a massive heart attack. It happens that I had was to do a open heart surgery. And it was like I've seen death print out. But tonight I'm here. The latest one is June of this year. It was my daughter's birthday, and she was going for a few days in Jamaica. 
And she said she's not leaving it because, you know, this month is one month, one year since I lost my wife. So she feel like I was too lonely and stressed out. So she said she's going to take me along with her to Jamaica. I said, okay, fine. We went to Jamaica June 1st. And the second was her birthday. She get herself together and she, she go to the beachside in Montego Bay. And she said she's not going into the water. But since I go down there with her, I said, I'm going into the water and I'm going to take a wash. I go into that water, my brother and sister. I, I first have been to that beach. I'm not a swimmer. But I go there and begin to wash a little. And then I didn't know it was a beach like, as you, as you step in the water, it begins to go down. Deeper and deeper and deeper. And I was there and they were, people was watching me, but I didn't know that they were watching me. I went down and I began to serve away into the ocean. Never knowing because as I said, I can only swim like a piece of wood or a, or a piece of stone. That's where I swim. And I go down there and I was baffling. Do not know what I'm doing. At the time, I, I saw a man next door reach about a chain away from me. I went down two times. And when I go down there, I have no landing. I find myself floating and I come back for the last time up. And that was the time I was going to cut out completely. I could only remember I said, help! And immediately as I said, help, I saw the man was coming and he called the guards outside. And everybody ran to my help rescue. I couldn't talk. I couldn't walk. All I could just look in like I'm a fool. I don't have no sense. When I realized the fact, every part of me is to take up water. The lifeguards took note on the beat and, 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 and it's sure. And they tried everything, nurses and everybody come around. They couldn't do anything. They decided to take me to the hospital. When they called the ambulance to take me to the hospital, if some of you know Jamaica, if you don't have money in a pocket, you die for once. You, you don't have nothing. You can't get no help. But luckily and blessfully, my son was there. And he, he works at the airport. So he doesn't want me to go to the ambulance where, where the, the public hospital is. Because for sure, I would die. So they took me to the private hospital where I get immediately help. All over me was covered in water. My lungs, my liver, my kidney, in that space of time. And I'm just saying that to say to you, my brothers and sisters, God promised that he will not left us nor forsake us. He will be a present help in the time of need. I have seen death printed out, but here am I tonight, because God is on my side, and I couldn't do it. No doctor could do it. They helped me right there, and it take hours to take that water off, off my lungs. And I get back alive and strong and healthy. I say that to say, brothers and sisters, regardless of what you are going through, God Almighty said, he will be a present help in the time of need and in the time of trouble. I have proven that, and I say to you, take courage. God is on your side. If you trust him, he will do more than what you can be able to ask or think. God bless you. Hi, I'm Malik. Um, so, um, like, I'm new here. My auntie, the one who was up here, she's the one who show, uh, showed me and my brother, my sister, my mom to this church. And I know some of y'all might have known me, like, from walking around the church a lot with my little brother, but. Um, I know you're like, oh, a kid's up here. I wonder what they got to say. But um, God's helped me a lot. Like, 
even sometimes when I don't even think of him, he still helps me. Because sometimes, like, my mom over there and my sister and my little brother, me and my sister and my little brother, we were about to go to um, foster care with our other mom because she couldn't take care of us. But my mom over there, she took care of us because we couldn't, because uh, my mom couldn't handle what was happening. So she's been taking care of us. And I'm 12 years old now, so it's been 11 years that she's taken care of us. And through all this, that I've, that I've grown to be a young man, and I've been able to um, grow. And I'm in the seventh grade now, and I'm 12 years old. Wait, I didn't say that. Yeah. And recently, I had to go to court for something I did in school. And my mom was like, oh, you need to pray. Because that was before I was, had the thought of like actually being serious in church. Then my mom said, pray, in a car. So I was in a car, it was like a one hour drive to um, somewhere. And I was just in the back of the car, just praying and think of all the things that could happen to me. And I was like, oh no, something bad's gonna happen, right? So nothing bad happened. I prayed and it, what I said actually went through. They didn't take the case away, but they had the case that they had me in a diversion program. I thank the Lord for that. But then, but then after that, I, I got myself in trouble again. So I had to go back. It's okay. So this time, I knew God was going to help me. So I started crying and praying when I got home from the place where they had to help hold me when I got arrested from school. When they brought me, I was crying to my mom's shoulder. I was saying, I never want to be there again. Like... It was so scary. Like, it was just a dark room. You're just staring at a screen. And then after the court, they put me on another diversion program. And that was my second chance. And I took this second chance seriously. I, even though I have four months, even though I have three months left, after today, I have three months left, I thank God that I'd be able to make this far. And that my mom was able here to save me through everything and that my sister and my little brother have been able to support me through my falls and my highs. So I just say that in the Bible it says, speaking it shall be done. So I spoke and it was done. So why don't y'all speak too? Bye. Out of the mouth of babes and suckling, y'all. That's a preacher in the making right there. Thank you, Jesus. We have... One more testimony, and then we're going to continue with our program. Hey, how y'all doing, man? I, I was not going to come up here, but God kind of forced me to come up here. I don't, I don't go to this church. My uncle go to this church. I got friends who go to this church. But a couple years ago, a lot of stuff was going on in my life. And I told God, like, if you get me out of this, then when I, give, when I get the opportunity, I will say my testimony in the church. And it's been two years, so... And I've never done it, so I was just listening to everybody come up here, so I wanted to get up here and do it today. But in 2017, I was arrested. I went to jail for a whole bunch of armed burglaries, armed robbery charges. And somebody was just telling me over and over, like, just get in your Bible, you know what I'm saying? Just get in your Bible. And I kind of got in the Bible, and I was reading, like, everybody was saying, like, oh, it's bad if you come to God when you go to jail. But a lot of people don't understand in the Bible, it says God wants you to come to him in your time of need. So I got in the Bible. I started reading the Bible like real heavy, real heavy. Got real acquainted with God. I'm sorry, I got to the point where I was helping other people comprehend the Bible. And God was just showing me like little signs throughout this whole time. Little signs, little signs, little signs. But basically, like I ended up sitting in jail for four years. 
fighting these charges four years, four years fighting these charges. And then, like I said, I was getting right with God. He was showing me little signs. So right before I went to trial in 2021, four years later, I was just sitting in my room reading my Bible, and God gave me a sign, and he was like, when it seemed like all the cards are stacked up against you, that's when I'm going to deliver you. And I was lost, like, I'm like, what does he mean by that? So right after that, I ended up going to trial. You know what I'm saying my family in there, the judge telling everybody if, if his man lose trial, he'll go to prison for the rest of his life. So now while I'm in trial, first they get one of my close friends, you know what I'm saying, he come in there and he tell them everything like, yeah, Tim did it. I was with him when he did it. This is how he did it. When we left, this how much money he gave me. And then they let him leave. And then as soon as he left, another one of my close friends came in there and basically told them the same thing about a whole different robbery. So on top of all of that, you know what I'm saying, like when I went to jail, like I play sports. Even right now I play sports. I play on two semi-pro basketball teams. So when I went to jail, I didn't even know a lot of stuff about jail. So while I'm in there, the first couple months, I was talking about everything because I didn't know. I didn't know they were recording everything. I'm listening to everything I'm saying. So I was talking about the whole thing. Like, I can't believe such and such toll on me after all the stuff I did for them. So now when I get to trial, they basically replaying all of these videos for the jury. So now I got two of my closest friends telling on me, and I got a video t of me telling on myself. <laughs> And after all of that happened, you know what I'm saying, the, 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 my lawyer got up there, said what she had to say. The state got up there, said what she had to say. And now I'm just in the back waiting on the jury. And the only thing I'm thinking about, God, you said when all the cars stacked up against me, you know what I'm saying? Like, they can't get no more stacked against me than this. And then, like, jury came out. They called me back out there. And to this day, like, I was still so shocked, like, just to hear them say, I'm not guilty on all these charges. <laughs> so like, just like everybody was saying, man, like God is real, like God is very real because hey, just like I told you, there was no way I should've won. There was no way I should be here right now, but God had a better plan for me. You know what I'm saying? I've been home for two years now. I played basketball on two semi-pro teams. I just got back from playing in Mexico. So it's, I'm just staying on the right track. That's all it is, man, thank God. <laughs> We see people standing in God's glory, but there's always a story. And in every story of victory, Jesus is the answer. Praise team, could you come on out and minister to us? Because watch night is for them as well, so it was just perfect for the, both the two young men to come up and give their testimony, their amazing testimonies. And I know our youth have testimonies as well, but they're going to come and sing a song called Freedom. And that's what we want them to have here in the church is freedom to give God all the praise. Amen. Do things decent and in order and give God all the praise. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Freedom in Jesus. Now let's put our hands together as one of our ministers, Minister Gene Falls, is going to come and bring you a word from the throne room.
Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Everybody in here has a reason to thank him. Even though you didn't come up here and give your testimony, you got a story. Just like I've got a story. And I know God brought me through so much for me to be standing in front of you today. Because over 30 years ago, I put a gun to my own head and I was getting ready to pull the trigger. But God delivered me from that demonic suicide spirit that was about God that had come upon me. And I know that you have a reason to be thankful this evening because look at you, you're in the house of the Lord one more time before this year ends. And also you're clothed and you're in your right minds. That's something to give God thanks for, hallelujah. But this evening I know that God has given me a short word for you. And I pray that he is the one that, will, that you will hear as he uses me to bring that word. First of all, I want to give God thanks and praise for who he is in my life and what he's done for me. I want to recognize the pastor and thank him and the first lady for being our leaders, ones who have set the example for us to move forward in the Lord. Hallelujah. This evening, I want to talk to you a minute about faith in the face of opposition. Many of us lose our faith sometimes when we have opposing things coming against us. This year in 2023, this may have been a challenging year for us, okay? All of the racism and hatred that we have seen in the church and around this world. Mass shootings and killings of innocent people, including small children and babies. Uh, Christian uh, nationalism, putting politics before Christ. And I'm sure you've seen and heard so much of that over these past few months as we are coming up to an election in 2024. But people have put these things above Christ. And people who are looking at gender and sex diversity, uh, because people think that they're helping God, that God made a mistake when he brought them here in this world as a male or a female. So they're gonna change their gender and tell God that he made a mistake. And also, we're talking about same-sex marriage. They don't believe that what God has instituted between man and woman should stand. Because I'm telling you, in 2023, it's been a trying year. Not just 2023, but 2023, I think, has been uh, probably pushed more than any other year that I can remember. But I can tell you now that 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 tells us, you should know this, Timothy, and this is Paul talking to Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be uh, unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. Don't we see that in this nation that we live in today? They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends and be reckless, be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power, uh, reject the power that can make them godly. And Paul told Timothy, stay away from people like that. And that's God's message to you. Stay away from people like that because these people are going to pull you down if you're not careful. Now, this seems to be the state of our world today. All of these things that Paul was telling Timothy, that's the state of our world today, okay? Despite the opposition uh, to our faith, we should still live out our unity, the unity of our faith which we were called to. And many of us start with Christ. We start out good. And some of us, as uh, you well know, when you start doing better, you start doing well, you start accumulating things, then you begin to step away from God because you feel like you can handle it all by yourself at that point. But I'm telling you now, without God, you are nothing. You can do nothing. And I realize that. And I pray that each and every one of you realize that as well. 
Now, you can't control what oppositions you may face in this life, but you can control how you react to it. Because we, as children of God, we must react differently than the world does to these oppositions that come against us. Not the fighting, not the killing, not the hurting, and not the maiming of each other, but to pray for each other, to love one another, because you can kill Satan's, uh, you can kill his whole advance through love. Now, the Lord wants us to remain faithful, even in the face of opposition. Don't be, uh, don't be intimidated by any way. Uh, don't be intim intimidated in any way by your enemies. This will be the sign to them that they are going to be de uh, destroyed, but that you are going to be saved even by God himself. For you have been given not only the privilege of trusting in Christ, but also the privilege of suffering with him. We are in, the in this struggle together. You have seen my struggle in the past, and you know that I am still in the midst of it. This is still Paul, uh, Paul talking now. But he's talking to the church of Philippi when he says this. Letting them know I've been in a struggle ever since uh, Christ has come into me and I have begun to preach his word. But I'm not giving up because that struggle has come against me. He said, I'm going to continue. I'm going to persevere. I'm going to continue to let God's word go before me. Okay? Now, Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. No matter what it is that comes against you, if you will just trust God for it and let your life be something that he can control rather than you trying to manipulate it or allowing someone else to manipulate it. Let us uh, keep our minds stayed on Jesus. That is the only way that we can succeed in this world, this crazy, cruel, upset world that we are in now. Christ is the only answer. He's the only way. God has not forsaken his people, even though you say, well, why are so many people getting killed? Why are these mass shootings taking place? Why are innocent people dying even in the war zones? Well, you know something? God has not forgotten his people. He knows your name even. God even knows your name. He knows every hair on your head. And some of us don't have as many hairs on our head as we used to, but he knows how many there are that remain, okay? Now, God has not forgotten us. In Philippians 4, 9, it says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his uh, riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is the way to get, to move God because God wants us to be a part of him. We are his family as we have given our lives over to him. But he said, now, you want other things from me even in the year 2024 that you can have these things but we must sell out to God we must let him know that he is number one in our lives and nobody else is going to control us but the Holy Spirit his spirit that lives within us and whosoever you ask in when whatsoever you ask in my name that I will do that the father uh, that the father might be glorified in the son if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Some people think that uh, he's like, like Jesus is a, is a genie. You can rub that magic lamp and he's just going to give you what you want. Jesus is not a genie. There's a process in everything that you get from God. And don't think that God's going to give you something just because you want it. God, sometimes what you want is not what you need. And God knows that better than we know that ourselves. He knows us better than we do. Hallelujah. So I can tell you now, remember who you are and who God is. Philippians 3, 20, 21 says, but we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own, using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control now when how come you can't serve a god like that got all power in his hand got the ability to do anything and everything that our hearts would ever desire and i'm telling you now if we ever turn away from christ we turn away from the best thing that's ever happened to us 
Now, uh, I can tell you this. You're a child of the Most High God. By the power vested in you by the Holy Spirit, you can resist Satan and his lies. But John 8, 44 says, when he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. John 10, 10, which is our 2023 uh, theme. The thief's purpose is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus says, my purpose is to give, give you riches, uh, to uh, give, them, uh, give them a rich, satisfying life. A rich, satisfying life. And if you're still living beneath your uh, standard now, you'd better go to Christ and ask him to get you to the point to where you can receive that abundant living that he's talking about. He's not talking about when you get to heaven getting that abundant. He's talking about right now, right here on this earth. You can have that abundant life that he's talking about. But we must sell out to him in order to do that. The bottom line is keep your mind stayed on Jesus and not on man. Because men will have you so confused and have you digging holes trying to bury yourself, trying to get around all the crazy stuff that they're doing in this world. But keep your, keep your mind on Jesus. Now, to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. May you all have a blessed and happy new year. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together again for the man of God. Now comes the best time of the service where you get to plant your seed for the new year. Your first offering that will be dependent on what you're expecting God to do in your life. So let us prepare our seed. Hallelujah. The ushers will get it ready while you get ready. Amen. Let us remember the word of God. It says, give, and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I know I need a running over blessing for 2024. So I'm going to make sure that I plant my seed. If it cannot meet a need, it is a seed. Hallelujah. Plant your seed with an expectation for the harvest. Amen. No one plants the seed and not expect an harvest. Song said, Blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Blessed when you come and blessed when you go. The 
song says your seed will defeat the devil. Stretch your hands towards your seat. Father, we thank you. Your word declare that you give seed to the sower. We thank you, Lord, that you've made us sowers in your kingdom. And every time a seed is sown, there will be a harvest. Father, we thank you that this seed will go forth in this new year to do kingdom work. And God has promised that whatever you make happen in his house, he'll make happen in your house. Father, we thank you for everything that you have done, what you are doing, but our future is even brighter. We praise your glorious name. Thank you, Lord. And may this coming year be even more bountiful for everyone that sows into your kingdom and understand the principle of giving. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church say... Voices of Judah, could you come back out and usher us into the presence of God before our pastor come out and give us the word for this year?
now God for your goodness and your mercy that you have shown us and in the name of Jesus let your word have a free course and let your heart say amen come on let's give God a radical praise right now You may be seated in God's presence. This has already been a blessed night. The praise and worship has been a blessing. The testimonies, come on now, has been a blessing. And I don't exactly know who that young man uh, that came up and shared his testimony. But we thank God for it. Amen. He, without even knowing it, God speaking on our theme for 2024. And he said, the word says, speak it. Amen. We're good. Uh, the, word, the word says, uh, uh, speak it, and you shall see it come to pass. You shall see it happen. The word also said we shall have what we say. And so I said, here is this young uh, man, young, I think, how old you say? 12 years old, and then he done tapped into next year. Amen. God lines up what he wants us to hear by giving us signs and wonders. And so I have a little video clip. Um, let me see if they're ready for it. You ready? And in the video clip, I don't know exactly how it's going to come out and sound. Uh, every year they're shooting fireworks over there, and they don't know what time it is. They start shooting. So if they don't hurry up and stop, I'm going to start claiming that land over there. <laughs> Amen. And, and if I claim it and take a walk on it, It'll be park views. So, amen. And bleed that. Amen. That's how we are here tonight. I just jumped over the fence and went to walking and claimed it. Amen. All right. So, um, in the video clip that they're going to play, is about 30 seconds long. It gives us our theme. And it kind of put it together with me st standing down here doing something. And I uh, said to my son, we don't have the shirt design yet. But I said to him, I said, um, um, I want to put my voice to it. And they, he worked it out some kind of way. So let's listen at this 30 second clip with our 2020 theme. Amen? 2024. I'm going backwards. 
Amen. 2024 theme. Amen. And when you hear it, give God a praise. That's it. Speak life. Amen. And maybe the, maybe the audio is with it. It is time to speak life. Doesn't matter what you're dealing with in life, God call us speaking spirit. We shall have what we say. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So in the mighty name of Jesus, open up your mouth, hallelujah, and speak life. In come Jesus' on, give, name. Amen. Now, come on, give God praise. Speak life. Last, last year, uh, we chose life. This year, we're going to speak what we chose. Come on, give God a praise. Now, that young man got up here, and he said, uh, God said, if I speak it, I'll see it. Then he said, I spoke it and I saw it. God spoke, let there be light. God spoke, let the dry land and the water separate. God spoke, let the ferment of the stars and the moon be in the sky and the heavens. And in the end, it said, everything God said, he saw. Amen. And so let's read this scripture for our theme this year in, in uh, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Put it on the screen. Amen. He says, death and life. Come on, say it with me. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. In other words, whatever you say, that's what you eat. Amen, somebody. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. And I, sp I plan to walk in blessing. So listen at the scripture that God leads us through 2024. The number one thing the devil want to do is take away your power source. The Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. So our tongue is one powerful mechanism. Amen. What makes our tongue so powerful? Because when God created a human being, he created a human being as a speaking spirit. Come on, say it with me. We are? Speaking spirits. See, our words are spirit. They're just not natural. That's why you can take your words, your tongue, the words that you speak from your tongue, you can say the right thing and lift someone's spirit. Because your words are spirit. Our words are spirit. You can take that same tongue and say the wrong thing to people, and you will bring their spirit down if they're not strong in the Lord. So the power is in the tongue. Amen, somebody. So you have to be careful. We have to go in 24, uh, 2024 with a mindset that I'm going to use my tongue and I'm going to choose to live. Amen. Our ability to speak brings things into existence. You'll be amazed when you start speaking about things, how they manifest themselves. Amen. If you think you're never going to be anybody body or have anything, you have talk yourself down, no confident, low self-esteem, you're going to get what you say. Amen. Somebody shout again, I'm blessed. I'm a child of the king. 
and good things are tracking me down. And my heart, it opened to receive. Hallelujah, somebody. The, the first spiritual assignment, watch God, when he created Adam, the first spiritual assignment he gave him was a speaking one. He had already given him a natural job, the assignment to keep the guardian. But he said, Adam, I'm going to give you now a spiritual assignment. And he said, this is Adam, I want to see how you talk. So he brought all the creation that he made, and he let them come before Adam. He said, Adam, you are made in my image. You are made like me. So you got to learn how to talk like me. Hallelujah, somebody. Listen, say it, I want to say it again. God said, I made you like me. You are made in my image, and you're made in my likeness. Watch God now. He said, I made you like me. I made you my image. I made you my likeness. He never said, I made you to talk like me. He said, but I made you like me. I made you everything uh, that I am. Then he said, now I'm going to give you a speaking assignment because now I want you to talk like me. And then he said to Adam, he said, Adam, whatsoever you call these animals, listen church, whatsoever you call them, God said, I made them, but whatever you call them, that's where it shall, what it shall be. What is God saying? God said, I'm going to give you power in your world to speak things. And whatever you call it, it shall be. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. Somebody say, I'm, I'm the head, not the tail. I am a lender. I'm not a borrower. Amen. Hallelujah. So God is calling us certain things, and we got to repeat what God said. Amen. It's so easy to talk yourself out of blessing. And it's just as easy to talk yourself into blessing. Amen, somebody. Our tongue carry this powerful spiritual weapon. And so God says, uh, even back in the Old Testament, God said, I, I bring you to record today. I put before you life and death. Then he said, but I want you to start speaking life. Amen? And so as we go into 2024, there are going to be some challenges. There are going to be some time the devil tried to zip your lips if you're going to speak life. Now, if you want to talk negative and you want to talk in a, in, a, in a way that is not spiritual life, he'll let you talk. But when you start speaking, he want to shut you down. Hallelujah. So as we go into 2024, there's going to be time that you're going to look at your situation. And it's not going to look like, it all, like you want it to look. And God's going to want you to open up your mouth and declare life. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm not broke. Can't be broke. Because God said he shall supply all my needs according to his rich and glory. Hallelujah. My mind made up. Come on, talk to me. My mind made up that I'm going to plant my seed. And God shall supply all, all my needs according to his riches and glory. Give God a praise for your needs being met. Come on, let's give God a praise for 24, 24, that it's not going to be like 2023. We declare our needs are already met. Our doors are already being opened. Amen. Paths are already being made. Shout like God that went ahead of you. Talk like God that went ahead of you. No down talk, no depressing talk. Open up your mouth saying, I believe. What's behind me is behind me. Good things are about to happen. 
I'm speaking life today. I'm speaking healing today. I'm speaking prosperity today. I'm speaking over my children today. I'm speaking over my life today. Hallelujah. You got to open up your mouth. You got to let your tongue loose for the glory of God. There's power in you. You have the Holy Spirit in you. Open up your mouth. Quit depressing yourself. God has given you power. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to even stand in the gap. Amen. And open your mouth up. Amen. And speak even on behalf of others. Be sure, I want that, my timekeeper to put 10 minutes up there because I just feel, I feel preaching power coming. Amen. So when about 10 minutes, I want to make sure I, I'm, I'm trying to put a bow on it. Power of the tongue. The Bible says that with the tongue, we can bless God. That tongue, we can turn around, same tongue, that just got through blessing God. And we ain't careful. We can turn around and curse man. Amen. Our tongues are strange organs. God knew he had to slow it down. So be, God said we need to learn how to be slow to speak. He took our tongue and he put it in a dog cage. You know it's dark inside of your mouth. If you keep it shut, it's dark. And then he put it behind bars. Those are your teeth. Some of us don't have as many bars as others, but you got some bars, I believe. And then behind the bars, he put lips in front. So the tongue got to come out of darkness, out of prison, through lips, just to say what it needs to say. That's why when it's coming forth, we have a little time to think. Amen. Because it break out in a heartbeat. It just... Shoo. But God realized the power of the tongue. King David went to his elder brother, Eliab, and Eliab said to David, why have you come? And who is the, and who's keeping uh, your little sheep? And David said, the tongue. He looked at the elder brother. He said, this uncircumcised giant, Goliath, Philistine, he's been talking trash all day. He's doing all the talking. All y'all doing is sitting back here and saying, did you see how big he is? Who can fight him? David showed up and said, who is this uncircumcised? Philistine. He says that he think he can defy the army of the living God. He told Saul, I'll fight him. Then Saul said, you can't beat him. You just a small little boy. They've been training him how to fight since he's been a youth. You can't beat him. Then David told the king. He said, let me tell you something. You don't know of the power of my God. He said, I slew a lion in a bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall fall today. Amen. Then he said, David said, because the battle, you got to use your tongue right. See, you're not in this battle by yourself. God want to fight for you. God want to give you the victory. Sometimes you got to say, the battle is not even mine. The battle is the Lord. Come on, repeat after me. The battle is the Lord. Come on, how many of you want to turn over your fights today? All your trials and tribulations, all the things that you've been trying to fight by yourself. Come on, tell the devil, the devil, I'm speaking today. The battle is the Lord, not mine. So King Saul said, well, David, since you're going to go fight him, now watch how David had to talk, keep speaking. He said, since you're going to go fight him, take my armor. And King David said, I don't want your armor. I don't want it. You ain't doing nothing with it. Why do I need to put on something you're afraid to use? He said, I got all I need. I have a sling and I have some rocks. 
And David picked up five smooth stones. He didn't need but one, but he picked up five. And then somebody said, well, you know, they've been trying to figure out all their life. How, why did David pick up five stones? Didn't he have faith? He didn't need but one? I said, yeah, he didn't need but one. But nobody go to war with one bullet. Amen. You got to let the other one know, the Philistine, that if y'all want to come down and get one too, I got some more. Hallelujah, somebody. Neither do you go to war just speaking one time. Every day you get up, you got to declare, I'm the head. I'm blessed. Amen, somebody. On and on, and finally, uh, amen, y'all put a real clock up there now. I don't know what y'all got up there. Amen. Oh, I, oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. They got one of them fancy clocks. I can see it, but y'all can't. That's all right. Listen, church. Then he faced Goliath. All this speaking, neither one of them have went in the battle yet. It's a word battle. It's a speaking battle. David has not fought Goliath. Goliath has not fought David. But David just got to keep speaking through Eliab. He got to speak to King Saul. And he got to now go before Goliath. Not, nobody have thrown a punch. Nobody have done anything. Everything now has just been a battle of words. Let me tell you something. Don't let the devil do all the talking. I hope y'all just heard me. Now lift your hand, lift your hand, lift your hand uh, if the devil ever tried to talk to you. If the devil ever tried to put thoughts in your mind. Don't let that devil do all the talking. Because he is the prince of the air. He comes to defeat us in our mind. Amen. He launched spiritual warfare in our thoughts. He tells you, you can't do this. You can't have that. And he put all these things in our conscience. And the next thing you know, it slides down in our subconscious and we become what we're thinking. You can't let the devil do all the talking. Hallelujah, somebody. When the devil started talking to Jesus, Jesus just, just let him talk. He said, turn these stones into bread. Jesus said, let me put a word on you. Man shall not live by bread alone. Then he take Jesus on the high pinnacle of the temple say, jump. Jesus say, but the word says, man shall not tempt the Lord thy God. And then he tells Jesus, bow down and worship me, and, and I'll give you everything you see. And Jesus say, but the word says, you shall worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall you serve. Jesus fought the devil with words. Did y'all just get that? See, we want to fight flesh and blood, but flesh and blood is not your problem. You can get rid of somebody in front of you in the tent mode just like them. You got to learn how to speak. I wish I had a witness. I know, I know some of y'all think if that one person just get out of my life, get off my job, go somewhere. No, it's not that one person you're battling. You're not battling flesh and blood. You got to learn how to open up your mouth and you got to get in the word battle. Amen. So you can be in the presence of that person and they don't bother you no more. You can be in the presence of that person and let your light shine. Amen. Really, we got to learn how to use words come in 2024 to encourage ourselves. When David got back to Ziklag and man, they had raided the camp and the enemy has taken the uh, soldiers, wives, and the children, and all their possession, and they wanted to kill David because he done took them away and didn't leave no protection at the camp. And they were upset with David. Nobody was with him. One minute they were about victory, and then the next minute they lost what meant most of them, and they wanted to kill David. So David eased away by himself, and then David began to encourage himself. Sometimes you got to know how to encourage yourself. Amen. Sometimes you got to get by yourself and become the best preacher to yourself. You got to be the amen corner to yourself. Amen, somebody. You got to be the choir to yourself. 
Amen. Sometimes you got to sing in your home, making a joyful noise. It, you, you're not trying to sing for a choir or sing for a crowd of people. You at home just giving God praise. Your tune really don't matter. All you do is giving God praise. You become the choir. Amen. And then you praise God and bring him into your presence and you preach a word to yourself. And you become the amen corner. Give yourself an amen. Amen. You got to learn how to speak God's word. And so God says the greatest power we have is this thing called the tongue. You know, that's what I like about the tongue. You can say the wrong thing. Are y'all ready, church? Because sometimes our thoughts be off and we get angry, we can get emotional, and we let the wrong thing slip out of our mouth. And the tongue have, watch this, whenever you send, the, whenever you send words out, the Bible said those words go out, come on with me, church, to perform. God, the Bible said God spoke, and whatever he spoke, his word brought back to him what he said. Are y'all, now listen, church. Whenever a human being speak, whatever you speak, your words go out to find what you said. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Amen. See, we, we got to know this. We got to know this. We just can't say, you just can't say, you just can't say nothing good ever happened to me. Because once you say that, your words go out to look for something not good. It's, uh, you just send it on an assignment to bring bad things back to you. Amen. And so your word out there searching for what you have said. Because the word just say, look, you are a speaking spirit. You just said nothing good happened to me. My back never going to get no better. My knee never going to get no better. My joints ache. This happened. And you're speaking and your word say, well, you know, I'm, I'm, all I'm doing is listening and going out to find what you said. That's why I said a few minutes, I'm not broke. So now, word, you need to go out and find me. Some prosperity. Amen, somebody. I am not sad. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So you need to go find something out there that brings me joy. Amen. Amen. So whatever you speak your word, go out to find what you say. This is what I like about it. When you realize that you don't send out the wrong words, you need to learn how to pull them back. Oh, y'all ain't hear me tonight. Sometimes you got to pull back what you said and say, wait a minute, I want to cancel that order. Half of y'all must be asleep. See, you may have said the wrong thing for a long time. Your word trying to bring it back to you. Repeat that to me. I'm canceling that order. I misspoke. I don't want that coming back. Bring me back blessing. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, the power of your words. So let me tell you one thing Jesus said one day. They was, they was in need of some money. Jesus was amazing in this miracle that he's done, this way he spoke. Oh, God. Jesus said, okay, we need money. He said, I want you to go catch a fish. Jesus said, Jesus said, the money for all that we need, you'll find it in the fish mouth. He said, I want you to fish all day. The first fish you catch will have enough money in his mouth. to take care of what we need. I don't know what kind of corn he had in his mouth, but it was valuable. He kept, they catch the fish, and in that fish mouth is a precious, valuable stone, uh, corn. They take it out the fish mouth, and they are able to buy whatever they need. Jesus, how did the money get in the fish mouth? Jesus, because I spoke it. What I'm trying to tell you, your blessing can come in unusual ways. Somebody will give God a praise right there. Quit 
speaking what you what 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 people think you ought to speak. See, some people say you can't get healed unless you take chemo or you got to take these pills or have this operation. Well, you can speak and say, if God's will, he can do a supernatural healing in my life. You don't have to take every, every avenue that the world say, take, open up your mouth and declare by the power of God, he's able to do it seemingly abundantly above. Oh, God. Long, this is a testimony that happened many years ago. First time I learned about the power of speaking. It's a person that had, was in the world and got all shot up. Five or six times he was shot. He wasn't expecting to live. The family called me down to the hospital just to have family prayer and say goodbye to the family member, the loved one. I get in the room with the wife first. And, I, and God says, tell, the doctor had said, the doctor had said, maybe have a few hours. God said, I want you to speak that he's not going to die, but he's going to live. Do you know how, and I, listen, I am not a traveling evangelist that can say something and move on. I was the pastor of that family. If I say what God says and it don't come to pass, then they're going to look at me and say, why would you say God said that? Oh, Jesus, you, I know I hear from you, God, but now this is a tough situation because you're telling me to speak beyond what the doctor said. You're telling me to tell this family, this wife, her husband not going to die, the father, their father's not going to die, their son not going to die, and every sign, every vital sign says that he's going to die. I put my hand on him, and you can feel the fever, and he couldn't move. They had... Um, uh, made sure that they gave him whatever they need so he was, couldn't move his leg, couldn't move nothing. God said he's going to live. So I went back in the waiting room. My time bought up, and I went back in the waiting room with the family. They, they were looking all sad. Oh, Jesus, help me say what you want me to say. I got to speak it. And I said, God said, in Jesus, come on now. <laughs> when God says something, you got to make sure God and God will show you if you say it, you can have it. If God tells you to say it, you got to still say it. I said, God say it. He's not going to die. He's going to live. And the wife and the mother said, but the doctor said. And I said, but God said. So I said, y'all come on back down here with me. And he had infection all over his body, mainly in the chest. I laid my hands on him, and I started sweating. I couldn't stop sweating. I'm sweating like raindrop coming off me. And I know what God was doing. He was, he was transferring. Amen, somebody. And I laid my hand on him. I'm just sweating. I'm breathing, kind of just sweating and breathe. And then after a while, he was sedated. He shouldn't have moved his foot, and, his, and, and he moved his foot. And his wife said, he don't supposed to be able to move his foot. They say he can't move his foot. I said, but God said. Listen, let me do it real quick. She went and got the nurse and told the nurse, he's moving his foot. The nurse said, he can't move nothing. She came down and he's moving his foot. And she said, something wrong. She looked at all her little stuff. There's something wrong. She went and got the doctor. He came in about five minutes later, said he's moving his foot. By the time the doctor got there, he was moving his leg. So my time is running out. He got better and better and better. Got out of the hospital. Got in his car, driving up and down the street. 
Come on, you got to be bold. If God done told you something, you got to open up your mouth and declare God said it. Amen. That's, that's, that's job that you're not expecting the door to open this year. Open your mouth and say, whatever God has for me, I receive it right now. And I speak blessing over my life. Somebody give God a shout praise. He got up, he lived. Lived many years. And as I preached this morning, after about seven years of living, I don't know why he thought he could go back into the world. But he went back out there. But that's not the point. God did what he said. Amen, somebody. Let us all come to the altar we have about five minutes, you can get behind me up here. Come on, let's say our new theme. Speak life. Come on, uh, families, you can get in front of the altar. We're about to cross over into a brand new year. Come on up, first lady. We're about to cross over, somebody say, into a brand new year. Glory be the God. Get with family, get with friends. There's plenty of room upstairs. I mean, say behind me, if you climb the stairs, be careful. This is the time we start touching the green with each other. God has, come on, come on, has God been good? Glory be the God. Speak life. Speak life. It's your tongue. We got come on. Some of y'all come on around this way so those in the back can come on up. Come on round. I want y'all to get close. We have about three and a half minutes. We'll be in. Get on up here. Come on, family. Come on. Come on up here with it. Closer y'all get to the man of God, the better you are. Let, let what's on your pastor fall on you. Amen. I believe there's an anointing on me. Amen. Close, ain't you? You're rubbing up against the anointing. Hallelujah. Glory, God. Amen. Boy, it's good to see family together. Somebody says, we, what it is? Speak what? 2023 be what? Chose life. Now you got to what? Speak. Again, God said, my word never go out void. It always bring me back that which I said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, God. Thank you, Lord. Someone say again. 2024 it's going to be a year of blessing I speak it now hallelujah 2024 going to be a year of blessing and transition I speak it now 2024 I will shift to a new dimension. To God be the glory. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Shift to a new dimension. Hallelujah. A new mindset. A new way of thinking. A new way of speaking. Hallelujah, God. 
Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Thank you right now. Glory, God. Twenty twenty four. Weapons may be formed against me. I speak now according to the word. They shall not prosper. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all ready? 15, 4, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 4, 3, 2, 1. Woo! Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, give God praise. We done shift. We done made it over. He done kept us another year. Hallelujah. Give God the highest praise. Lift your voice. Speak to now. Glory to your name. Happy New Year. 2024 is here. And we're still standing. We're still giving God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Glory. Hallelujah. Happy New Year.